Most of your points this school year will come from your performance on extended responses. The purpose of this tutorial is to show you resources available to you when you answer an extended response. This tutorial will not review specific writing skills in answering an extended response. I have created a writing tutorial that includes examples, written instructions, and videos. Each extended response that you will write will have a link to this and I will show you how to access that in this video. Let's get started looking at the resources that you will have access to for each extended response. Every extended response will have the same format. During this part of the tutorial, I will be giving you an overview of the features in this extended response. I will review each feature in more depth later in this tutorial. Each extended response has a header. This header will include the name of the unit, the topic, and the name of the assignment. Use this to help you stay organized. Below the header is the prompt you need to answer. This will help you focus your response. At the end of each prompt, you can see the point value for the assignment. Notice that it is underlined and in blue. That is because it is a link. This link will take you to the rubric. Below the prompt, there are bullet points with point values. These are meant to help guide you in how to answer the prompt. The rubric will provide a more detailed description of these bullets. Below the bullet point descriptions is the answer box. This is where you will type your extended response. Below the answer box is a table of helpful resources. Notice the video icon next to the helpful resources. This is where you can access this video. You can see there is a link to the answers to the research. You can see there's a link to the writing tutorial. You can also see there are links to the three brief explanations. The rubric is the first resource I want to show you. A rubric is similar to the bulleted points under the writing prompt but is much more detailed. A rubric is a table that breaks down the assignment into different categories. Then for each category I provide my expectation for you. I would encourage you to review the rubric before you start any assignment. This will let you know what's expected from you. A link to the rubric is located at the end of the extended response prompt. Click on it. Let's follow the link. We see the first three rows or categories will be the same for each extended response. These are the introduction, length, and underlined categories. These are worth two points each. The next category or row is the evidence category. This will also be the same for each extended response. This is a three-point category. The remaining categories or rows describe how to answer the extended response. This is the content of the extended response I am looking for. These are all three-point categories. I would encourage you to leave this tab open when you answer the extended response. You can reference it to help you make sure you include everything you need in your response. Let's go back to the extended response. Now that you have used the rubric to review the expectations for the assignment, let's review where to find your answer. Your individual research is a great resource for you to use and is what I want you to use. I'm going to click on my individual research here. Notice there's questions here. It's my goal for you to be able to write your extended response from the research that you do when you answer the questions. You may not be able to do that now. If not, it's all right. It's something to work on for the rest of the school year. It's important that you research each question carefully. Use at least three different websites to find information while you research. This will allow you to learn more and ensure your sources are reliable. It will also make it easy for you to cite evidence of a source in your extended response. So for define prohibit, I would research this on the internet. I would visit at least three different websites and I would click my answers in here and then I would mark where I found these answers, either by creating a link or putting the links in the click to add notes section. Let's go back to the extended response now. The extended response itself has links to help you find information. Let's look at how the link to the research answers can help you find the information you need in your response. You'll notice that this looks similar to your research, but if you click on the link here and follow it, it's going to take you to the research answers. These are the questions that you researched on your own and that I reviewed with you in class. 
Let's click on one of the slides. Notice they're just in note form, or bullet form even. Use these answers to help you answer your extended response. You'll probably use the questions near the end of the slideshow to help you create your answer. So if I scroll down to the end, we see there are more important ideas here. Each slide has links down here at the bottom to help you find the information. If you are unable to find reliable sources in your own research, I would encourage you to follow these links and use them as your sources in your extended response. Each slide also contains an icon for a video. These are videos that I created to give you an explanation of the slide. Each slide has a specific video explaining that slide. These videos are to help explain the bullet points to you. You'll also notice each slide has a, an icon for a text. This text has been written by me and is meant to provide a further explanation to the question. This text is more in depth than the bullet points. I'm going to click on this text to show you how to use the text. So if I click on the icon, I'll follow the link. This text will be a beneficial tool to helping you answer the extended response. This text can always be found by clicking on the text icon in the research answers. It is meant to clarify and expand on the bullet points. The text is numbered. These numbers correspond or match up to the slide from the research document. This is to help you stay organized and easily be able to find information. Along with the numbering on the text, the questions are in bold. This should help you more easily find the information that you are looking for to answer your extended response. I've written these texts to give you an in-depth explanation of the research questions. I would encourage you to use this resource to better understand the content. Let's go back to the extended response to review more resources available to you. There are three brief explanations for each topic we study. These are delivered throughout the study of our topic. The day one brief explanation starts out with basic information about the topic. This information is broad and is meant to introduce you to the topic. The day two brief explanation is more in depth than the day one explanation. It is meant to narrow down the focus towards the answer to the extended response. The day three brief explanation will be the most beneficial to you in writing your extended response. This explanation focuses on the information you need to answer. Let's follow the day three link. The presentation itself is probably not going to be helpful to you, but like the research answer presentation, the brief explanations have links to videos explaining them and a text that further explains the information. I would encourage you to use the texts and or the videos to help you get information for your extended response. Every time an extended response is shared with you, a cluster will also be shared with you. Let's take a look at a cluster. The cluster is a graphic organizer that will help you organize your ideas before you write your extended response. The cluster will always have the writing prompt you are answering. Below the prompt, you will sometimes see a box that asks you to list your answers. You would simply type the answers in this box. The purpose of this is to narrow down your focus when you write. Below your listed answers, you will see a box for your introduction. Type your introduction in this box. Below the introduction box are your answer boxes. This is where you would type your answers. Notice there are multiple boxes. Separate your answers by topic. There are links to helpful resources to help you find information to include in your response. There is a link to the text that I have written in the top right corner. This should make it easy to get to that text from the cluster. There is a link to the research answers in the top left corner. This should make it easy to get to that text from the cluster. Let's go back to the extended response to review any more resources available to you. When you write your extended response, I would encourage you to use any or all of the resources that I have reviewed in this tutorial. 